to talk about the English language and I mean personally I believe that's very important but equally important uh, I'm gonna talk about how we can effectively um, facilitate webinar sessions and online training so our objectives for today include number one uh, we're gonna identify the steps in leading effective meeting um, before I proceed, just want to make sure that you, you all have um, a pen and a paper with you ready because I'll be giving you some helpful tips that you can um, use and you can bring back as your pasalubong to your um, students since majority of our learners today are teachers. And then secondly, we're going to overcome behavioral challenges when facil facilitating a meeting. Cause, um, so we'll be talking about a lot of behavioral challenges um, for our for participants so actually we'll be talking about behavioral challenges I'm gonna put emphasis as well on those different behavior behavioral challenges and then we're gonna recognize the common problems in webinar sessions um, so we'll talk about uh, technical problems how we can improve engagement so we'll, we'll also talk about that and also we're gonna highlight tips to increase <coughs> To increase webinar engagement so these are our four objectives for today and uh, my appeal to all the participants today is to lend me your ears in the next uh, perhaps one hour and 30 minutes and we'll make sure that this is gonna be a productive and a worthwhile session for everyone and if you have questions by all means you can um, type in your questions in our chat box and I'd be more than happy to try to address whatever query or whatever question you may have for um, the session, allow me to jumpstart my discussion by giving emphasis on how we can facilitate meetings and discussions. And I'm going to share with you a framework that I came across online. Um, and I've been putting it to practice and I've been preaching and teaching our leaders here in Infocom and Inspiro um, about how they can effectively and efficiently facilitate meetings. But before I share or I discuss further, allow me to inform everyone, especially those who are in Dumaguete, um, that we are actually in need of some people who or some agents to support our local and international accounts. So if you are interested, you can send in your resume or you can apply via our FB page in Spiro Dumaguete. But as what I've mentioned, we have been preaching and we've been sharing to our um, leaders, specifically with this framework and model on how we can effectively facilitate meetings and discussions all right so let, let me introduce hold on okay so um let's stress out first the problems with most of the meetings i'm gonna i'm gonna share with you three common problems when we are facilitating meetings. The first is, I'm sure you would all agree with me and you can type in me in our chat box if you have experienced attending a webinar session that is boring. Can you type it? Type me if you've experienced attending a webinar session that is boring. And we don't want that, I mean, I, we don't want to experience that. <laughs> Personally, with the current situation with the, at, at the height, height of pandemic, um, we are having our classes in our doc, uh, in our DBA course or doctorate in, doctor in business administration online and it's kind of challenging because according to research and you should note this that our attention to detail will start to deteriorate after 30 minutes so take note of that after 30 minutes our attention to detail will start to deteriorate so why am I, why am I telling you this it is highly recommended that we we advocate and we inject that what we call brief diversion. And brief diversion can dramatically affect um, that attention to detail. No? Um, just to prove my uh, my premise that the, in the first 30 minutes, we, we may be very attentive to it, but after 30 minutes, our attention to details may start to deteriorate. Um, I'm not sure if you've felt this one uh, that you've tried to put in a or to use your old clothes probably and it fits perfectly and probably in the first 30 minutes you may feel uncomfortable maybe we've gained weight gained weight at the height of this pandemic so in the first 30 minutes you may feel that this, it, it, I mean one of the two things may happen no? you have, it may be one you have gained weight or secondly your shirt may have shrinked 
<laughs> I'm not sure, but but in the first 30 minutes, you may be very attentive to details and you, you will feel uncomfortable. But after 30 minutes, your attention to detail is gonna start to deteriorate. So okay na siguro after 30 minutes. So take note of that if you're facilitating online classes, you have to believe in brief diversion as it can dramatically affect um, that attention to detail. All right. So boring, that's one. Another is time wasting. Um, we may have the fundamental tendency to go around in circle. So when we are facilitating a meeting online, we have to make sure, I mean, I'm going to share with you later on through the model that I'll be introducing, how we can ensure that our meeting is effective in addition to efficient. And I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, are already aware no, of the differences between efficiency and effectiveness. Is that right? Yes, type yes if you're familiar with the dif uh, with the differences. What's okay? That's good. Um, he Hillary Joe said yes. Michael said yes. I think everybody knows the differences between effectiveness. But for the benefit of those who don't know, effectiveness is to the outcome or to, to the result, right? And when we're talking about the efficiency, we're talking about the budget. We're talking about the time. So for example, uh, for it to make perfect sense, if for example, I have 1,000 pesos and I ask you to decorate this room, okay, I ask you to decorate this room within the week. So if for example, the result is astounding, too beautiful for words, so you are effective. But if you went beyond the budget of 1,000 pesos, then you are inefficient because you that's beyond our, the, the budget, right? Or if you were not able to deliver it within the week, probably in two weeks' time you were able to deliver it, Then, but the result is astounding, then you are effective but inefficient. So when we're talking about efficiency, <coughs> excuse me. So when we're talking about efficiency, um, we're talking about the time and the budget. And if we're talking about effectiveness, we're talking about the result or the outcome. Okay, just want to make sure that everybody, we're all calibrated in terms of our understanding in, if, if, in those terminologies. So in going back to when we are facilitating meeting, um, we have to be effective, that's number one, and equally important, we have to be efficient. Okay, so that's our goal. So we should never, and as much as possible, we have to maximize the time allotted for the meeting. So unfortunately, that's another problem in, uh, in some of the meetings that I've attended to, we have wasted a lot of um, time. And lastly, uh, there are a lot of meetings also that I have attended to that didn't really have that sense of direction so in as much as possible through the framework that i'll be sharing with you um so we, we'd be able to address that but again i'm sure you would all agree with me that we don't want to participate in a meeting that is boring time wasting and also without any direction so allow me to share with you a framework that you can use to lead effective and efficient meeting or effect effective discussions so number one all right, I think everybody's ready, no? Um, so step one is you have to set the stage. The first thing that we have to do would be to set the stage. And in this particular phase, we create, we establish the, the agenda of the meeting as well as set the meeting logis logistics. So these are usually sent to the participants before the actual meeting. So what are inclusives of the meeting agenda? In the meeting agenda, you will have to send in the details of what the meeting is for and the specific topics or items that will be discussed in the meeting. And in addition to the agenda, we'll also send the meeting logistics. The meeting logistics include the time, the date, the venue, and the participants of the meeting. And to those who are using um, Outlook, you can use your calendar invite via Outlook. But step number one, when you are facilitating a meeting, you have to have that meeting agenda and you have to have that meeting logistics. So you have to set the stage, okay? Second, after setting the stage, we have to provide the structure. The next step is to provide structure. And here in this particular phase, we will ensure that during the actual meeting, we stick to our goal and we accomplish what we have set out to do in the meeting. So what do we include in uh, in this particular phase when we are providing structure. Number one, you have to greet with, uh, or you start with an opening statement. Or you can start with a greeting, 
or introduction if that's necessary. And in most meetings, and also when you're facilitating a session, it's highly recommended that you um, inject or you, you can start with icebreakers. Icebreakers, you can think of any um, icebreakers like a... Um, or you can divide them into particular groups and they'll have to work on, into something but you can you can be creative in your um, in, in your icebreaker activity and you can also review of uh, you can review the previous me minutes of the meeting you can review the agenda for the current meeting and then the setting of roles so later on we'll talk about the, the various roles too and then after you open the session you can proceed with the discussion proper and in this particular um, phase, you have to ensure participation of everyone. So it's kind of challenging. Um, it's kind of challenging because, um, especially when we're doing when we're doing it in a webinar platform, no, because we don't see you, um, we, we don't see everyone, and they're what we consider we, we consider multitaskers. And as I speak before you also may be engrossed into something else, maybe doing doing a lot uh, a lot of things. So that makes it more challenging. So I'll give you tips later on how you can get how you can improve the engagement of the participants when we are facilitating webinar session. And lastly, and lastly we have to proceed with conclusion. So in this particular phase we review the action items and we send the minutes of the meeting. Question. I have a question for everyone. How many hours should we be sending the minutes of the meeting? You can type it. How many how many hours should we be sending the minutes of the meeting? If you are uh, tasked to send in the minutes of the meeting, one day after two to five hours, after four hours, two hundred twenty four hours, <laughs> thirty thirty minutes. All right. Actually, a day later. Actually, it's not a day later. It's not the next day. At least one day after the meeting, four hours. Okay. Actually, we're we're kind, naman. Um, yung mga recipients are, are kind of kind and understanding. But you can send the minutes of the meeting within twenty four hours. That's two four within twenty four hours. One hour if urgent. All right, so, so you, you have to send the minutes of the meeting within 24 hours. So we, we started with setting the stage. P is to provide structure. Next is O, we have to overcome challenges. Now, there are a lot of behavioral challenges, and I want you to take note of this because you will, be, you will ultimately experience this when you are facilitating an online class. So this step ensures that throughout the duration of the meeting, everyone is involved and is focused on, on the meeting. And so I'm going to share with you the common behavioral challenges that most leaders would encounter and, and should overcome in a meeting. Hold on, let me switch my camera on so you can see me too. All right, I hope you can see me now. Oh, I... Josh, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. So as what I've mentioned, I want you to pay extra attention to this because you will have to deal with these different um, the, the, the different behaviors of our participants. So number one, um, number one is the dominator. You know what a dominator is? Have you experienced facilitating a meeting with dominators? Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure you have experienced that. Um, for the benefit of those who are unsure, who are the dominators? These folks take over the conversation, and they share at length. They have an opinion about every topic, and they take up valuable time. So when you are facilitating a meeting, they can probably they they can probably yeah that's right very opinionated uh, opinionated yes. Apple in short, and that's true. And whether we like it or we like it, you will have to deal with the dominators. <laughs> Papi, the Pajali Beaser, actually. <laughs> Self-centered. 
yep. I'm sure you have experienced a lot of people who are like this. Um, because we are just different. We are we have different background, we have different culture, we have different tradition, we have different uh, education, we have we are just different. And we have to understand that there will always be dominators in when you are facilitating a meeting or when you're facilitating a class, right? So there's a dominator, there's also a naysayer. Have you heard of it, of this word? You can you can pronounce it naysayer or you can pronounce it naysayer. Yes, no, no, po, no, not yet. Okay, so this is an addition to your vocabulary. Naysayer. Okay, naysayer. They always argue every point, whether it's big or small, and they argue with everyone. That is correct, jo Jocelyn. They are the pessimists. They always have something negative to say. Correct. Argumentative people. That is correct. Patola, <laughs> according to Joel. That is correct. And there will always be participants who are naysayers. They always have something negative. Maybe because I came across an article. I just want to share with you. I love reading. I came across an article and I specifically quote, and I will never forget it, that our view of the world has the fundamental tendency to tilt on the negatives. Um, one common example, for exa example, uh, someone sn snapped at you and then you snap back and you snap at the next person, right? So w we were trained to be like that, even when we were in elementary or in high school, and, and especially through the teachers here, you have to, you have to understand that we, we have to understand and to practice how to work to see the upside. What that means is, according to Catriona, we have to work uh, to see the beauty in or to work to, to see situations in a silver lining no? but again just want to stress it out to everyone that our view of the world has the fundamental tendency to tilt on the negative and it literally demands that we have to work to see the upside Ganon. so there is silver lining correct but and that's true we always see the bow you always say um maganda pero uh, mabait pero diba? we always say, say something like that because we were trained to be like that, no? So we have to work to see the, the beauty and work to see that situation in a silver lining. So there, there are always uh, naysayers. Mga naysayers, they always have neg something negative to say. So unfortunately, may mga ganyan. And then there's also finder of faults. Correct, that is correct, according to April. Yep. That is correct. Grace from, from the word nay meaning no ne negative. Correct. Has an eye on flaws. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. So in addition to um, the naysayer, there's also, when, when you're facilitating a meeting or a class online, there is also silent but deadly. Who are the silent and deadly? They are those who say nothing. They are actually probably right now because um, we have over 100 participants in Google Meet and I'm not sure on, on Facebook. But um, some the, the silent and, but deadly may not be that responsive. They say nothing and you just don't know whether it's because they are shy or they have no opinion or they are daydreaming or they're planning how to be my worst nightmare. <laughs> Nasalo of ampulo. They circulate things before speaking up. Yes. So silent but deadly. Hopeful. Okay lang na silent. Wag lang deadly, no? <laughs> Alright. Okay, thank you. The silent bombs. That is correct. <laughs> Alright, next. We also have to consider the rabbit trailblazer. You know what a rabbit trailblazer is? Rabbit trailblazer. Free thinkers, what do you think about rabbit trailblazer? Or is it your first time hearing this um, behavior? Type away. Is it your first time? Yeah. Unstoppable. The one who influences others. First time. Okay. Sige. Carry lang pag first time. Allow me to share with you what do they do. You know what? Uh, for 
for rabbits, they cannot they cannot run um, or I don't know if they're jumping or running, but they cannot do it in a perfect straight line. No, they have to. Um, they cannot do it in a perfect straight line. So the rabbit trailblazers always have a lot of ideas, uh, many of which are not relevant to the discussion, and they lead the team down a path or many paths that end you up further away from where you needed to be than before the meeting ever started. So, sa tag, sa bisaya pa, moro maghalo-halo because of a lot of ideas coming from rabbit trailblazers. So I'm sure you have experienced this na when you're facilitating a class or a meeting, ang daming ideas coming in. Pero unfortunately, there are some ideas that don't really make sense. Parang um, it's it's different and parang walang sense, no? Or it's not relevant to the topic. So as facilitator, you have to know how to ensure that that we get back on. Because so uh, the rabbit trailblazers have the tendency to derail the discussion, no? So as a facilitator, it's your responsibility to ensure uh, we get back on track, especially when rabbit trailblazers attack. No? And lastly, I'm sure a lot of you are like this. I, I don't generalize too, but there are a lot of you who are multitaskers. I remember when I was attending one of my classes uh, last week, I believe so, one of my one of my classmates said na they were while they were listening to the speaker, they were also cooking something. So that's a, multi that's a task of a multitasker. That's the job of a multitasker. So their eyes, for the multitaskers, their eyes are on phones, tablets, and various other devices. And they may appear busy, but they are actually not engaged in the conversation. According to Ken, they appear busy, but not engaged. That is correct. Due to the demand of our job. <laughs> okay. Um. Actually, um, our jobs are too demanding, no. But we can actually talk about talk to Sir Josh about how you would be able to manage your time to be able to manage your stress because inability to manage your time would result to more stress. But just like the law of supply and demand, about more more supply, less demand, or less supply would result to more de more demands, right? The same concept can be applied in time and stress. If you have more time, that will result to less stress. If you have less time, that will result to more stress. So the key is to have that control of your time to be able to manage your stress. And probably we can talk to Sir Josh about a future webinar session, how you can you would be able to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. I understand um, we have a lot of webinars now overlapping, and, and that's true. The key is to be able to man, to man, to identify the urgency and importance of tasks. So yun lang naman. Um, so you should know how to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. But going back, um, as what I've mentioned, we can coordinate with Sir Josh about future session in relation to to that ability to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. So we, we can schedule that. Um, in, in future dates but you have to know how to overcome these behavior different behaviors the dominator the naysayer the silent but deadly the rabbit trailblazer and the multitaskers you have any questions um, with these uh, various behaviors before we proceed with a step uh, with step four yeah according to Rachel correct no questions all right Guys, if you have questions, by all means, you can type in in our chat box so we'll be able to address and uh, find answer to your questions. All right. Okay, let's move on to step number four. When you, uh, This is the last step, and this is to ensure that whatever commitments were agreed on during the meeting would become a reality through follow-up and updating of the MOM. Okay? So you include the follow-up dates, so you track commitment and and progress and as what I've mentioned you have to circulate the MOM within 24 hours after meeting was adjourned and provide feedback and also to realign so going back to our spot model in in facilitating effective and efficient discussion you have to set the stage provide structure overcome challenges and lastly to track commitment and progress
Okay? You have any questions for Spot before I share with you the problems now when we are facilitating meeting through online platform or we're doing webinar sessions? No questions? All right, good. Loud and clear, none so far. All right. Now, let me share with you the common problems when we are facilitating webinar. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. And as what I've mentioned earlier, in the first 30 minutes, our attention to details is it's kind of it's there but after 30 minutes it's it's starting to deteriorate so by now it's over 30 minutes just want to make sure that you're still with me can you type yes in our chat box if you're still with me because we have over 100 participants so i expect madaming yes dapat <laughs> all right good One technique, according to Ken, one technique is to avoid dead air. That is correct. We have to ensure that we are spontaneous when we're facilitating meeting. No? Uh, it's kind of challenging, especially when you're facilitating meeting and you, your medium of communication is English. So, so I'm exhorting, encouraging everyone to improve on your uh, English communication skill. So it's, it's easier said than done, but practice makes... What? Practice makes perfect. Actually, not perfect because no one's perfect, right? Practice makes permanent. Permanent, not perfect. All right, so it takes practice. We have to keep practicing. Um, so if you want to know more about the English language, you can always check my YouTube channel. I have a playlist there for free webinars with the SVA, with the various rules in the English language. Um, siguro mga two minutes, mga two minutes na, na video that you can learn from. We talk about homophones, we talk about um, SVA rules, we talk about infinitive phrase, and a lot more. So you can, you can, you can visit my YouTube channel, and you can share it to your students, pretty please, if you can share it to your students. Because our goal is to produce siguro mga qualified students especially right now at the height of um, siguro, techno technological breakthroughs we, uh, we are re we have a lot of job opportunities in the PPO industry so hopefully you can help us and what's keeping our economy right now afloat is because of the BPO the emergence of BPO um, industry in the Philippines so because everybody everyone gets affected and in the BPO, I think we're continuously ramping up. All right. So let's continue. Let's talk about the various problems now in terms of facilitating webinar or OLT or online training. Okay. Number one, the first problem when we are facilitating webinar is to promote the right, uh, using the right channel and the right time. So much of the webinar success comes down to the success of the promotions. And it's no wonder finding the right promotional mix is a top challenge. And according to survey, businesses found the most effective channels for webinar promotions to be. Number one is email. So that's an effective um, channel to promote webinar. Number two is partner or co-marketing. Number three, employee or personal networks. And then the least effective channels in terms of promoting your webinar session would include number one, Facebook and Twitter. And that's according to survey. Um, so email by hands down is the best channel for webinar promotion. And you may also want to take advantage of your um, the, the partners and employees social networks to widen your reach. So you can give them promotional pieces to share on their profiles. And then, um, now that we have the right channel mix, it's time to get the timing right. So I'm going to share with you four simple rules to maximize your promotion, promotion schedule. Um, number one, you have to start promotion four weeks before your webinar. Four weeks. And there are, there's a steady flow of registration three to four weeks prior to the live event. Secondly, take note of this, you can promote on Tuesday to th uh, uh, Tuesday to Tuesday. On to, you can promote on Tuesday and Tuesdays attract the most registrants. So the best day to promote is Tuesday. 
And then you can send your invite early in the morning. And according to the research that I came across, re registrations spike between 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And lastly, you can increase promotion one week before the webinar. And according to survey again, 69% of registrations occur the week before the event. And with 33% of registrations occurring the day before the webinar. So I'm not sure if this is applicable to everyone, but in the event that you're planning for a webinar session, the best day to promote is Tuesday. And the best time to send invite via email is at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. All right. Next challenge, and I'm sure you can all relate to this. And at many points with the number of online classes and sessions that I've participated in the past, I have experienced this too many times. And I'm talking about technical glitches, technical haywire, and technical issues. And who amongst you here are experiencing this? Me? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you. Actually, siguro karun, as I speak before you all, a lot of you may be having challenges with the uh, with the internet or with a headset. No. Ako personally, when I'm facilitating on-site, I'm facilitating a class on-site, I always require my participants to show their faces on cam. Can we do that? Alright, diba? Very good. And we're poor connection. <laughs> a lot of you really look beautiful. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for showing your faces. And again, as what I've mentioned, I require my participants to use their cams, they to use, to have um, microphones on, but they have to put, to, to, to put it on mute. But ay, nakapang, nakapang bahay lang po. Sorry po. It's okay. No problem. All right. But you can show your show us your beautiful faces. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure you all can relate to this one, no? uh, working through technical issues. And webinar organizers always want to know how to get through technical issues should they arise and make sure they know how to work the webinar controls. And according to the survey, again, done online, the top challenge when it comes to actually hosting a webinar is navigating the control panel and interacting with panelists. And this is an easy challenge to overcome. The key to this the key to this is you have to, it's very simple, plan ahead. Just like earlier, prior to the session, I had a meeting with Sir Joshua to ensure that we will never be experiencing technical issues or technical glitches. So we planned ahead. So the day before your webinar, you have to have all organizers and panelists log into the webinar. And we can do sound checks, we can tweak lightings at all broad, uh, broadcast locations practice passing the presenter role, launch polls, and make sure all participants know how to mute and unmute themselves. And I'm sure you all you all know how to mute yourselves, right? But I, I'm hearing a lot now. My <laughs> okay, so the key to this is you just have to plan ahead. No? So, dapat may mga, kung sa, sa stage before, may mga dress rehearsal. They call it dress rehearsal. So, same with our webinar session. We also have to prepare and to plan ahead to ensure that we don't experience technical glitches or technical issues. Next, the next challenge, I'm sure you all can relate to this too. Um, to all the teachers here, we will soon be facilitating online classes and you have to anticipate this and you will, you will ultimately experience this. A challenge in terms of engaging the audience. Correct? Correct? Yes? Absolutely, yes. Correct. That is correct. So what can we do to engage our participants? So you've done all the work to drive attendees. Now it's time to compel or to give them compelling or edu educational content that they'll remember. The key to engaging your audience is not to talk at them or talk. You have to talk with them. We, have, we can use the tools like polls or surveys and then you can... You can use that raise hand feature or annotations or Q&A to stir interest and get your audience to participate in the webinar. That's why you notice um, in the um, 
in the first 15 minutes of our discussion, I always ask you to type something. And that is because I want everyone's engagement and everyone's participation, right? And that's the key to engage, one of the keys that I can share with you how you can engage your audience. In addition, your visuals also make a big difference in audience in engagement. Um, later on, I'm gonna share with you some of the tools that we can use uh, to include videos, striking images, um, and don't be afraid to get on your webcam when you are presenting. Audiences will more likely connect with a face than a dis disembodied voice. And that's why I had to show my face earlier. Okay? And dapat, you have to, dapat when you're presenting, hindi yung nakapambahay, ha? <laughs> oh, let's just stretch to Sir Jesse. I can see you from here. <laughs> Okay, so again, you have to engage your audience because as what I've mentioned, first 30 minutes, attentive yung mga agents, mga participants natin. But after 30 minutes, it will ultimately die down. So it will start to deteriorate. So dapat you have to keep them engaged. You ask them questions, ask challenging questions. Ganon. Accord, let me share with you what Iris said. One of the advices given to me by the year-level coordinator is to make it fun or give some jokes to the students. It is just like online selling daw. Wag daw masyadong serious sa pagtuturo. And I agree. Pero depende ha, kasi not everyone is gifted with that skill. Kasi when you're cracking jokes, dapat it's nakakatawa talaga. Kasi if pagpilip, um, it can also give, it can also bore them. So, According to Jocelyn, if you're presenting, would it be okay if you don't show yourself? It's okay not to show yourself, but it's better if you show yourself because it can enhance the engagement of your participants. Okay? According to Lovely, our college professors use icebreakers pero relate sa topic. It's, pero be careful ha, when you are um, injecting icebreakers. You have to make sure that you stick with the time because icebreakers can be too dragging as well. For example, you're just allotting five minutes for the icebreaker. So by hook or by crook, you have to be able to complete that activity in five minutes' time. All right? Because our goal natin is to be efficient. No? Yeah, you can insert a trivia. Um, yung, what works best, you can also include an activity yung scavenger hunt, mga ganun. You can, you can squeeze that in too. Alright. So, engaging, that's one of the, uh, siguro pinaka top na challenge when you're facilitating a webinar session or OLT, online training, that's to engage your agent. Alright. Um, for challenge number four, for uh, I think this is not I mean only this is only applicable for mga D the ICT or you mga uh, departments that coordinate with uh, or that facility or organ departments that organize the the session no? capturing the registration it's kind of challenging too but what I normally do um, we ask them to write their employee numbers employee names in the chat box so we'll be able to monitor. But luckily for the ICT, my pro uh, I think you all have registered prior to the session, so we can easily track participation. No? What if I don't have a good speaking voice? Mm, that's a very good question. Then it as what I've mentioned, practice makes permanent, right? So you have to you have to practice. You have to modulate your voice. I agree. Clarity is everything. Never mind the voice. But it, it, your voice can also help in, in terms of the engagement. So you work on your voice. You can modulate it. You practice. You record your voice. Practice makes permanent. Yeah. Uh, pacing is very important too. Don't be too fast nor too slow. So you have to... Yeah. That's why you have to practice. Um, you can record your voice. And luckily right now, madali lang naman i-record ang voice. You can just... Uh, record it using your camera phones and then you you let someone assess the pacing is it too fast is it too slow you you can you can ask anyone or your friend without being biased for an honest feedback all right next um, let's move on um, another challenge is choosing a winning title 
So picking an attention-grabbing title is critical, and all the promotion in the world won't matter if your webinar sounds like a dud. And so um, you can try different uh, formula to help you pick the perfect name of your webinar. So you have to be creative, and it has to spur interest in terms of creating or choosing a winning title. Pero sa, ano, sa DepEd, I think you, uh, it's not applicable kasi, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, kasi you already have, um, you already have the module name, ganun. So, so I'm not sure how DepEd, DepEd works. Um, according to Lovely Stage Sprite, yeah, it's kind of normal. And according to survey, yung pinaka, na, pin, pinaka hadlukan sa tao is not actually death, but it's about, it's actually stage fright. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to it, no? But it again, practice makes permanent. So it 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 requires practice. So you have to keep practicing because whether we like it or we like it, this is the new normal now. And and whether it, I mean, if you have stage fright, you have to face that fear for you to be effective. <laughs> Every time na magahawak ng microphone, nanginginig. I can relate because I used to be like that. Um, but the key is to face your fear. You have to acknowledge your fear and do something about it. Wag naman. Um, um, you can research further <clears throat> about growth mindset. No? Um, you can research on YouTube about growth mindset. I'm not sure if you've heard about growth mindset. Have you heard? Growth mindset? The opposite of growth mindset is fixed mindset. Like you can grow from experience, yeah. <clears throat> Please elaborate. Okay, I'm gonna share with you a my, my personal story uh, about growth mindset because I love telling stories. When I was complete, when I was completing my uh, MBA program in Norsu, um, admittedly, I wasn't really good with math. You know, math really is my worst nightmare. Siguro it was because I passed nasha. And so in one of my co one of the subjects. It was, I think, it was financial management. Yeah, financial management, and I was, I really screwed up in terms of math, no. But I was, you know, how masters, you know, pag masteral ka, um, you're just provided with a topic, and and you will have to select a topic, and then you will present it, right? So it took me a lot of sleepless nights um, to get to know more about the topic that I chose, and I chose the mo, yung pang yung topic na I was having difficulty with. Um, I think it was about the different formulae of financial management. So, but so it took me a lot, a lot of sleepless nights. I stayed a lot of so so much time in the library and browsing through the net to, to get to know more about the the different formulae. So by now, um, you can ask me anything about IRR, internal rate of return, average rate of return, future value, present value, mga ganon. Um, I think I think I can I can answer that. In as easy as ABC, para ganun. So, and who would have thought that because of that growth mindset voice in me, and and I faced that fear, and as I speak before you all, that has opened that opportunity has opened, or that learning has opened opportunity for me to become a registered financial consultant, or a, to be a registered estate planner and financial consultant. So you see, if you believe in growth in in every opportunity. Then the, you will definitely, you will definitely grow. You will definitely uh, mature and develop your skill. So we, I highly encourage everyone here to believe in growth mindset. If you can research uh, about that on YouTube, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube about, about growth mindset. And why am I telling you this? Um, if you are having challenges, if you're having stage fright, um, you have to believe in growth mindset, um, and you have to face that. And that opportunity can land you to better opportunities, can give you better opportunities. That's correct. Ria said open to learning. If you are specializing in English, don't limit opportunities in English. If you are specializing math, don't limit your um, specialization in math. You have to keep exploring because the world is so big out there. So you, that is what growth mindset, growth mindset is. That is correct. Widen, widening your horizon. All right. According to Richie, madami akong natututunan today. Thank you very much, Richie. <clears throat> All right, let's continue. Um, another ch 
challenge in terms of uh, facilitating webinar is measuring success. So how do we measure success? Unfortunately, you cannot measure success if you don't know what it looks like. So in the early planning stages, you have to decide on your key performance indicators or KPI. I'm not sure if you've heard about KPI or the key performance indicators. And some of, here are some of the common webinar K KPIs. Number one would include registration. Uh, number two is attendance rate. Number three is attendee engagement score. Um, number of qualified leads, generated pipeline revenue. Um, in the case of the teachers, it can be the participation or, or the, um, the, the, the score of the, age, uh, of the students after the exam. So that can be your key, key performance indicator. So that's how you measure success. And lastly, driving greater value. Um, so how do you continue to generate leads after the live webinar? Um, one of the best ways to continue lead, continue lead generation is to repurpose your webinar. And it would include, number one, you can record your live webinar and offer an on-demand on version. Um, you can create multiple blog posts from the content shared during the webinar. Um, you can record your presentation and you can upload it on your YouTube channel. You can create an ebook. You can create short how-to videos. Um, with your first webinar, these challenges seem like a big deal but as you do more and more webinars the solutions become second nature and you'll be too busy raking in the sales to notice to notice them so um as, right like right now i'm actually recording this video so i'd be able to upload it as well on, on my youtube channel so we can also revisit this okay any questions with some of the problems i'm sure you all can relate to this especially I'm sure I'm sure you all can, can relate to this, especially in terms of the technical issues and, and engaging your audience. Is that right? Yes. Do you agree? <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So our goal today is to put emphasis on how we can engage we can improve engagement no so engagement from our students from our participants when we are doing um olt olt is online training o olt is the same with webinar right olt so how do we improve and how can we improve uh, or how can we increase webinar engagement so number one Number one is you have to learn to read the virtual body, body language and cues. So how can we do that? I, I don't see you. <laughs> I can't see everyone, unfortunately, because we have over 100 participants today. And it's kind of challenging, no? Especially when you're doing webinar session with a lot of participants. So how can we read virtual body language and cues? What can we do is... We can use the feedback mechanism provided in the tool. Uh, most virtual classroom products offer yes or no, ch or check buttons, or tools for showing a raise hand, polls, etc. Just like what we're doing right now, um, I, I ask everyone to type in and to comment in our chat box. Um, that is correct, Ken. Engagement, always ask your agents or your audience. You, you engage and never discredit their presence. And it makes it makes a webinar session more challenging. And to be honest with you all, webinar session is a lot more challenging than doing the face-to-face -face session or doing that ILT. ILT is instructor-led training. So, mas difficult ang webinar session, right? Kasi in face-to-face, -face, you can see them if they're engaged or not, right? And you can see them when they're yawning or not. Pag inaantok, you can see them. But when here in webinar, they're just gonna opt to... Uh, turn off their video and they can do something else and that's kind of that, that makes it challenging right but you you have to be extra sensitive with the uh, body language and the cue so if if and you can only do that by checking their responses online that's why i'm also checking your responses because i want to ensure engagement and then you can call them from time to time according to jocelyn that is correct attention check that is correct um raymond you motivate them i'm not sure what else can we do in terms of motivation but as a teacher you can add additional points for those who are participative right um, to those who will be sharing 
their thoughts, their insights, and they've who, who have been glued all throughout the presentation, you can add additional points, right? Or you can you can tell them that there's going to be an assessment after the presentation, right? There are a lot of ways, creative ways, how you can ensure engagement. <clears throat> but the number one is you have to be extra sensitive in terms of the uh, the language and the, the virtual body language and cues. Number two, I think one mentioned this earlier. Yeah, Vida said, make them participative. Correct. Attention check, correct. I think one mentioned, you have to call on participants by name. Um, and that's why it's suggested that we limit the number of participants. No? Um, for you, when you will be facilitating a class in the future, I think you will only have less than siguro mga 40, siguro mga 40 to 50, 40 to 50 participants. So, mas manageable than what we're having right now because we have over 100, close to 200 participants. But try to call on participants by name and let them know ahead of time that you'll be doing this. And you can use this strategically so as to encourage dialogue and collaboration and not to discourage participation. Alright? So, you can call them. And I'm seeing... Gilbert, John, uh, Michael, Ethel, you can call them by their first name, uh, by their name. All right? Call on participants by name. That's number two. Okay, don't forget, you have to call them, call them by their name. Next, you have to learn new ways to ask questions. Um, like any questions, uh, those, uh, that actually doesn't work as well as the virtual classroom as it does in the physical setting. You can try sending your questions to the chat area. Or chat box and that's why I've been encouraging everyone to type in your questions in our chat box um, instead of asking any questions so learn new ways to ask questions next is guys the trend now when you will be present you when you will be presenting you don't put everything in in your presentation and then you're just gonna read right because if anything i mean that's gonna put the uh, the audience to boredom if you're just if you have the tendency to to read your to, to just read your presentation and that was then and i remember when, when it comes to presentation and i mean i always remember you cannot use yung mga clip arts in your presentation you you know what clip arts are you cannot use that because it doesn't look professional at all. You can use actual pictures, mga ganon. Alright? Um, so, going back to my tip, you have to refrain from reading. Um, you just use keywords and then you elaborate. Or you can just use picture and then you elaborate. Do not, do not put everything um, in one slide and then you're gonna cut everything. You're just gonna read it. It's gonna put, put everyone to boredom. Because according to to the article that I came across, we read faster now than we, when we are reading. Parang our our minds process faster than our mouths. So pag mas mabilis daw na mo basa ang ato ang minds kaysa ato, ato ang mouth. So if you're just putting everything, your spectators or your learners would be able to read to conclude faster than when you're just reading. So dapat al Correct. Murata o bata ana nga nag-reporting. So gone are the days na magbasa-basa. You're gonna put everything in one slide. That was then, but it's no longer the trend now. Especially in the corporate world, to those who are in a corporate setting, that's not applicable anymore. According to Agustin, indeed the mind is faster than the mouth. That is correct. So refrain from reading. Huh? You can just use mga bullet points, ganun, and then you elaborate it. Alright? Just like what I'm doing right now, I'm just sharing with you the tips. So, mga tips lang, and then I elaborate it. Right? Next. Try not to overemphasize the technology. Um, in a traditional class, you don't say, now I'm going to erase the whiteboard. Be careful of too many references to bandwidth or troubleshooting. And while it's important to acknowledge any technical issues, Repeated apologies and references will emphasize the, the technology rather than the learning. So refrain from putting emphasis on the technological failure. So that's what it means when you, uh, when you overemphasize the technology. So apparently when you will be facilitating a, an online session, you will encounter a lot of technological challenges, ganun, but 
you try not to overemphasize the technology. Okay. Next, you collaborate. That's why you have to keep asking. No? You so collaborate rather than to lecture. So work. You have to work to make participants partners in learning. And when you have content that requires excessive lecture, you consider other formats for delivery such as podcasts or recorded sessions. Actually, um, I would highly recommend no, to use other platforms than um, just you know um, ha having presenting everything na ganitong platform lang. We're using Google Meet. No? Um, for teachers here, you can use other platforms. Like for example, you can record ahead of time for the topic and then you can upload it on YouTube and then you can ask your students or your participants to visit YouTube and you can watch it from there and then once they're done you can go you can go back to you can all go back to the um, to Google Meet right um, you can do that and I plan to I intend to do that earlier but probably after that as we conclude the session today I'll let you see one of the videos that I uploaded on on YouTube so you can see how it is done as well so you can you can so you can replicate that too you can record it ahead of time and it can save you a lot of time and a lot of stress but you can just all you need to do is just to direct your agents to or to give the link and then they're gonna watch it on YouTube and once they're done um, you all you need to do is to elaborate and expound get on all right, so um, collaborate rather than to lecture, and also you can you consider other formats of uh, for delivery such as podcast or recorded sessions. So you can try to record, and that's the beauty of YouTube. You can upload your video and you can have it in a public setting so everyone can see it. And what's better is if you get I don't know if but if you have a lot of students and you can have more than one thousand subscribers and you can have at least four thousand watch hours. Correct me if I'm wrong then you, your channel can also be monetized. So, perk na yun. That's additional, ano, that's additional perk of maximizing YouTube. So, probably after the session today, you can explore vlogging on YouTube, on YouTube too. Diba? And you have hundreds of students, and it's easy for you to achieve that 1,000 subscribers target. And, and then your channel can be monetized. So another tip is you have to strive to collaborate rather than to lecture. So um, it's about collaboration. It's about synergy. You know what? Yes, 1K subscribers, 4K watchers. That is correct. Uh -oh. And I think see, si Mam Mam Anani Sapinit is a YouTube vlogger too, and you can you can like her YouTube channel. And I think she she's specializing on deaf mute. So if you want to know more about the science. Then you can like her YouTube channel. Too. Okay, no one. Um, so additional income din yon, no? So <laughs> additional income for everyone. But again, um, use another platform. You consider another platform. And the key here is collaboration, no? This is a big word in terms of um, online training or webinar, and that's about collaboration. Um, when we talk about collaboration, it's a, it's synonymous to synergy. You know what synergy is? Have you heard of Synergy? What's the meaning of Synergy then? A lot of you said yes. Like in a team pushing one another to be stronger. Not sure. One plus one equals three. Actions. Being whole. Teamwork dynamic. Okay. Actually, everything that you mentioned, everything is correct, no? Um, interactions power working together working together right it's about it's like collaboration no working you work together because individually we are i mean we are i'm just a drop but together we are the a force to reckon with we are an ocean or individually i'm just a stick but together if we're working together for one common goal we can easily clear away the cobwebs that's how powerful synergy is so when we talk about synergy, it's actually a combination of two words. Synergy means synchronized energy. Synchronized energy. Yeah. That's synchronized energy. Synchronized energy, that's synergy. So we have to believe in the power of one. We have to believe in the power of teamwork. So we have to collaborate no? rather than lecturing. Okay. 
pero sa ano sa mga stu- sa mga teachers here uh, we don't take it away from you no to 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 lecture because that's what your job calls for and that's to lecture so i think for teachers you have to lecture and you have to ensure there is collaboration all right next is you have to use multimedia when it uh, when it makes sense not not just because you can for instance, if the, if, one, if the only thing you're showing is someone's mouth moving, then video may not be worth the effort and the video can actually become a distractor. As a rule of thumb, you have to use the simplest technology required to effectively meet your objective. So as what I mentioned earlier, Kanina, as I mentioned that you have to use uh, different platforms, but you have to use those platforms when it makes sense, not just because you can, all right? And lastly, this is what I've been talking about. You have to limit the audience size uh, in the webinar session um, because it is nearly impossible to achieve any real interaction with 150 people and above on, who are online all at once. And most webinar type events are short, so consider offering a session uh, two or even three times. Otherwise, consider recording the session and making it available on demand only. So. You have to be extra careful. You have to limit the the audience size, and you have you have because because if it's more than one fifty, it's kind of difficult to deal with to handle this. Oh, uh, tama batching. Correct batching. Dapat may batching tayo. So you will limit it to one fifty. One one fifty participants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts about the various tips? Which of these tips um, is most applicable for you? Or which of these are you having challenges on? I'm sure a lot of you would say um, refrain from reading. Sinong may challenge ito? Kasi not everyone is spontaneous, no? Agree? Not all, not everyone is spontaneous. Not everyone has that that agile thinking na, med, na madaling, ano, madaling, that they can easily think of, um, of supporting facts. So that's why um, my, I think I, what I can leave you with is number one, you have to read. You read, you read, you read. That's why I love reading books. I love writing articles. So you have to expand vocab- vocabulary. So you have to keep reading so that you can share something as well, no? Because you cannot, you cannot share, you, ca- you cannot share what you don't. I mean, you cannot, you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot share if you don't know anything, right? So number one is you have to keep reading, especially to the teachers here, para mas, para we can have uh, a wider perspective, a wider understanding in terms of the topic. No. Yes, that is correct. According to Mam Vida, master your craft to avoid reading. Actually, accor- according to Joel Ola, Ola, Sir Joel Olavides, what is the advisable duration for the effective effective we- webinar? Um, sir, the answer is, it actually depends on the topic, pero if you are giving utmost consideration to what I mentioned earlier, yung attention to detail span of 30 minutes, the best is, siguro pinaka matagal is 1 to 2 hours. Okay, any question, any other questions or what is most applicable? So number one, as what I've mentioned, going back, Refrain from reading, that's very important. So you have to master, no? Master whatever you're doing. If you're teaching your if you're teaching math, then you can find other ways or effective ways. You can think or plan ahead how you can simplify yung mga concepts and principles in math. If you're te- if you're teaching English, you can share um, any other mga, mga success stories. You can share that. So you can only do that when you are fond of reading. Because it is in reading that we learn something new. No? We learn something new and something different every day. And always remember, learning is a continuous process. Not because you are already a teacher now that you have to stop learning. No? And I'm even encouraging everyone here, especially the teachers, to continue learning. And, and to you can pursue your... Um, 
you can pursue your um, how do you say this your edu you can pursue education in the acad in the academe you can probably complete you can probably enroll in masters or a doctorate and you can and there are a lot of ways how you can improve so never ever stop learning and improving yourself even if you are uh, at the pinnacle of success so you have to continuously learn something new every day and don't limit it to your area of specialization because if you are just focusing on english i mean as what i've mentioned there are a lot of great opportunities out there correct that is correct ma'am ma arlene graduate graduate studies so ang dami pa siguro dito who have not completed their master's degree or not even enrolled in the master's degree so i'm encouraging everyone Ako nga, um i mean i don't mean to brag but this is not actually a requirement in the bpo industry to enroll in the academe to complete masters or doctorate pero i'm pursuing it because i believe in growth mindset no? this is my way as well of anticipating for the future no? so you also have to anticipate for the future all right so i hope that i get your your commitment that you're and right now it's easier because our platform is online online classes lang so you can stay at the convenience of your home without going to the schools um, so much madale that that way right so again I'm encouraging everyone to pursue education okay hopefully all right now lastly I'm gonna share with you the tools that we can use to maximize audience engagement. Let me know how if you're familiar with this. Um, I'll start with type me, earn my micro credentials through online courses. That is correct, sir. Learning is a continuous process. That is correct. The world is so big out there to explore, so don't limit your uh, your specialization to education. You can you can learn about financial management. Which is very timely and relevant that's very um that's the in thing right now at the height of this pandemic we have to know how to manage our finances well right so you can learn more about financial management you can learn more about process improvement and that can be your competitive advantage that's my favorite pinaka favorite ko talaga ang competitive advantage so let me know type me also if you are teaching in college minimum requirement is masters that is correct mm -hmm. I used to be a college instructor, um, but I had to give give I gave it up to pursue my doctorate. So, because I want, because mas malaki daw yung rate if you have completed your doctorate, then you have completed your masters. So ayon, and hopefully I can um, probably explore going abroad with my with with a better credential. You can do that. It will open a lot of great opportunities for you. Yes. Competitive advantage is the key. So don't limit it to your area of specialization, right? Okay, especially sa math teachers here. If you're good at math, you also have to be good with English. Kasi nga, English is the the language of business communication. No matter how... And that's a challenge, no? And you have a lot of information, a lot of great ideas, but you don't know how to communicate that. That's kind of challenging. So that will not translate to excellence. Pero kasi dito sa Pilipinas, doing research means higher salary and position. Di po talaga nakakuha yung essence and importance of research. <laughs> Alright. Ah, okay. That's good. We have teachers in the Middle East. Very good. Learning never stops. Okay. Guys, let me know if you're familiar with these platforms. And you can explore this after the session. Um, these are helpful platforms. And I've been using these um, when I'm facilitating a class. Alright. Number one, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Type me if you're familiar with Prezi. Okay, very good. We have we have a lot who are familiar with Prezi. Yes, very good. Very good. And and the beauty of it is it, it really has that smooth transitioning from one slide to the other. So, so it's ang, ang ganda ng Prezi. So you have to know how to... So I'm encouraging everyone, to those who are not familiar with this, you can research Prez, Prezi on Facebook, uh, on on Google. You can just type in Prezi, and then you explore it. Because it's especially in business presentation, it really it it really amazes uh, the the participants, no? Because it's napaka professional to look at. Ang ganda. Nakakahilu daw lang gamitin, correct? 
And that was introduced long time already. We used that in a very good, very good that you've been using Prezi. And that's a very powerful uh, platform that we can use. Prezi, all right? So you can use that. Um, to those who are not familiar with Prezi, please, you have to, as what I mentioned, we've been talking about competitive advantage. And this can be your edge. Because huh? you can even put it in your resume that you're good in Prezi presentation and stuff like that. All right? So Prezi. Number two is, you can use when you're presenting images, no? Images. Um, I'm encouraging you to refrain from writing everything or in as much as possible, dapat minimize text lang, no? And we're maximizing images. So, wow, magkakaroon daw ng karagdagang feature ang Prezi coming soon. Very good, that's nice to hear. Correct, sir. According to Anvik, images will make your slides alive. That is correct. But you have to be careful, ha? Yung mga images kasi may mga may, may protected yan, may mga copyright yan. So, don't use yung mga copyrighted na. Um, also, um, about the images, correct, images, kasi nga, we have to realize that uh, a lot of people, are vis a majority of learners are, are, are visual. You're familiar with Savvy, no? S-A-V-I. No po. No. Okay. Ang Savvy, if you research on Google, no. When using images, we need to acknowledge the source. Correct. Um, VKA. VKA. It's the same with Savvy. Savvy stands for, um, S is to somatic. So, there's somatic learning, uh, learner. A is auditory. V is visual, and I is, I think, intellectual, something like that. Oh, savvy. You can research more about savvy learning. But but the point I'd like to drive is, majority of the learners are visual learners. So if you are, actually, ang daming visual learners, siguro nasa mga 60 to, 60 to 70% are visual learners. So ganun kadami ang mga visual learners. So we use images. Yes, 65% visual, 60 to 70 visual learners. So we use images, okay? Pero again, when we're talking about images, yung mga actual pictures, you use actual pictures, do not use yung mga, uh, how do I say it? Diba we have, we have mga pictures, yung mga picture ng tao na mga sticks, mga ganon. You don't use that, ha? Huh? Use actual pictures. Yeah, mga cartoons, don't use that. And no, no for clip arts. Yes, Norwin, you 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 hit the nail on on the on the head. No, no for clip arts. I remember when I was when I was finishing my my master's course. I think one of my college professors was doing. Napaka traditional kasi. So we don't want you to be a traditional learner. Na may gumaganan ganan. So don't use that. All right. So image. Um, Image usage. Next, you can use audience polls. So you can use that. Um, pag magpapa question kayo ganun. So you can do that. Um, next is breakout groups. So when you will be handling a class or a thing, because due to limited time, as much as I'd like to do this or incorporate breakout groups. Uh, we cannot do that, do that, no. But but for your classes in the future, if you will be facilitating an online class, you can inject or you can put, you can use this as your way of injecting icebreaker. According to Norman, poll everywhere is a nice app too. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, sige. So breakout groups you can divide. Like for example, ngayon we have around, uh, we have close to one hundred seventy participants today, no. So I can divide you into 10 groups and then, so we'll have, how many? We'll have 16 groups all in all, or 17, parang 17 groups. So you can assign to group 1, group 2, ganun. So it can help in, in terms of the engagement. So breakout groups, it helps and it works. And lastly, of course, how can we forget video, no? Maubos na data ko, sir. You can ask, uh, you can, ano, you can play some videos. Kaya nga saan kanina I mentioned, you can... You can upload your video on YouTube. You can ask them to uh, to watch it on YouTube. Ganon. So you can, kaya nga you plan ahead. It's highly recommended that you plan ahead.